For this video, we're going to talk a bit about me, as I mentioned on a previous video this week. I do have some announcements for you guys, particularly regarding Twitch, but a few other things. So last time I did a video like this was, what, a month, month and a half ago, where I mentioned some of the stuff I had cooking and has since come out. Today, I want to keep you guys in the loop as what's going on as we move forward. So right now, as I record, we are on the cusp of the next Living World episode, War Eternal. Now, we've had several trailers and a long wind-up to this. It's looking like it's going to be a big one, not just for the fact that it's the finale, but also in terms of where the story is, where the studio is, and that new focus on Guild Wars 2 they were talking about, and all that kind of stuff. So, the first thing to be clear about is that, yeah, over the next week, we're going to have a lot of videos and a lot of discussion, a lot of spoilers and gameplay and patch notes to do with this big release that's coming out, and that will probably swarm things for a while. But beyond that, I'm going to be kicking some new stuff up, and there's some things I really wanted to mention to you all. So first of all, uh, is the Dungeon series. That's currently airing. Last I spoke to you was before I'd recorded or shot any of it. The whole thing is now done. I wanted to give a massive thanks to the community members over in our Discord, in the guild, who came along for those videos, who did all the cool builds and were really patient as I went and showcased all that stuff. I genuinely think that Dungeon series is one of the best sets of videos I've made in a long time. They're not going to be particularly highly trafficked because because people think of dungeons as sort of has-been content at this point. But the amount of trivia I realized I know about that content, the different ways you can play it, the stuff that people usually miss out on, and just how weighty and meaty they ended up being as productions, I'm really proud of it. So if you guys have some time, check those out. The full series is complete. A lot of you are asking me, hey, WP, can I get a chance to play with you? Unfortunately not. It was a long while ago now, actually. I finished Ara Path 4, and we concluded the whole thing. The rest has just been in post-production and they'll be rolling out. We just did COF so there's only a couple of episodes left and the whole thing is concluded. That kind of ends a lot of my core Guild Wars 2 coverage. I've done series on the jumping puzzles, I've done series on the personal story, the metas, the open world, the dungeons. Really, I feel for the first time since 2012 when the game came out that I have a decent catalogue of anything you could want to know about Core. And I think that's really pretty goddamn awesome. Once the dungeons are done, I know is the big thing you're all looking forward to. And that's Living World coverage. Starting in particular with Living World Season 1 that has its own hive of problems. So let's talk about this. Living World Season 1 essentially isn't playable. So how can I do a cool playthrough series that's as comprehensive and detailed as I've done for everything else? The answer is I can't. And for a long time, because I feel so stricken and annoyed about this fact with the game, I was going to do a cop-out video where I basically just give you my middle finger and say, if you don't like the fact Living World Season 1 doesn't have any videos, take it up with the devs. Seriously, I was going to do that. That way I could focus my energies on catching up to the awesome new stuff in Path and Fire and Beyond, which is really what everyone cares about and what the whole thing was all about when we started it last year. That's what I was going to do, but when I turned my attention to Season 2 just a couple of weeks ago, playing it through, getting ready to make videos on that for you all, with Living World Season 1 having been skipped, I realised there's just too many references to stuff you don't get to see. They're constantly talking about Scarlet and the fact that Bran broke his leg and who's Belinda and who are the Zephyrites and just all these different things that I couldn't help myself and I've gone back and done as best I can some season one content for you all. So yeah, it's not playable, but here's what I've done. First, a video where we play what is currently available, the Scarlet's War recap with the Ella McKay dialogue giving you these walls of text about these new characters. And it's a video in which I talk about the situation the game's in, criminal situation I feel the game is in, where this crucial part of the story in such a story-driven MMO is missing. So there's a video on that. It's a long video and a good discussion piece. And then after that, there's an hour-long cinematic recap in the style of the old lore videos I made, summarizing Guild Wars 2's lore in general before Guild Wars 2 came out. So it's a scripted video where I go through all the beats of Season 1, and as I do so, there's Season 1 music in the background, there's Season 1 trailers, there's Season 1 concept art, and as much in-game 1440p footage as I can possibly get representing these areas. Because some of it is possible to explore. Like, we can go to Cragstead, even if there's no content there. We can go to the hatchery, even though there's no content. We can abuse fractals somewhat to get glimpses into things. And I've made an hour-long video 
that's pretty good, I think. It's very well calibrated to transitioning from the end of vanilla stuff into season two. It doesn't have any extra detail. The production did take a while. It's what I've been doing the past week or so, but I did cop out somewhat. I didn't go to the full lengths of writing my own script. Instead, I've essentially abridged and tweaked what is actually a reasonable write-up over on the Guild Wars 2 wiki of season one events. I mean, granted, it doesn't flow very well or lend itself to commentary whatsoever but that's kind of where I started many thanks to them and you'll see what I mean by that when the video itself comes out so yeah I've got some living world season one coverage that will be coming soon this next big season four finale is obviously gonna throw a bit of a spanner in the works but that's all done and I've been getting asked by you guys for about a year now what I was gonna do and well, it's now in the can. Uh, to go with this transition into Season 2, Heart of Thorns, the better content and beyond, I did want to do a bit of housekeeping on the videos at the same time, refresh them somewhat, make any little improvements I could. So, going forwards, after we hit that point, you're going to hear the microphone quality changes a little bit, and also the in-game footage should change a bit, as I've updated my reshade preset in a couple of ways. One of the major things I've done on the reshade side is someone showed me how to to edit the DOF shader file to return a null value whenever it wants to blur something at infinite range. What that essentially means is all the blurring that occurs, say, on character select or when I'm in side-by-side -side cutscenes and on all the beautiful skyboxes in the world will no longer be there. It's a really awesome implementation. And it means when you guys watch my videos from now on, you should see the really nice Amnoon Oasis skybox. You should see other really cool ones too, like Blood Tide Coast, the Cursed Shore. If I'm ever shooting footage now, it should look better. And I just kind of wanted to bump things up a bit. Hopefully, I don't mess up the EQ on the mic too much. I genuinely don't think I'm that good at that stuff, but hopefully I sound better over the upcoming days and maybe you guys can offer your feedback on that uh, as that happens. So yeah, we'll be into season two and beyond. Some other stuff on the side, Ghost of Ascalon, the audiobook project from last year. The vast majority of that audiobook is now recorded. I can't offer it early on Patreon or anything as a terms of my contract for actually being able to voice it with you guys. But once the whole thing's done, I'll find a way to put the chapters out. One of the main pieces of feedback I got when I was producing that before, where basically it had no viewership at all, was people wanted to binge listen to the whole audiobook. They didn't like the idea of just going two chapters a week. So when it returns, I'll see if I can play with that in some forgiving way. But I kind of want to do Edge of Destiny afterwards. And I like the idea of stretching ghosts out to fill the gap while I record that one. I guess we'll see how dire the views are because it did feel pretty bad last time. Another thing you just saw a video on is the Elite Specialization Introduction Series where I'm going back retroactively to the Heart of Thorns content and giving you introducing the Berserker and introducing the Reaper and introducing the Druid and all that stuff. I'm really enjoying making that and again in the spirit of actually having all the content out on the channel is super important to me. It's pretty lame that I made a Druid video in 2009. 19, expecting it would never be invalidated by later updates, only for then the devs to update the Druid Elite skill moments later. Arr, but in general, it's nice, and we're almost done with that. I'm glad you guys enjoyed the Berserker one since it did just have the overhaul. And yeah, you guessed it, the next for a little teaser is going to be Daredevil, which had its own significant change, I guess, with the addition of Swipe I covered on recent balance. There is the other Elite Specialization series, Elite Speculation, the cooperative one I do with Boots. On that one, oh, we're not so sure. Neither of us are really very inspired about future Elite Specs right now. And so honestly, guys, I don't know how long you'll be holding out for the next one of those. We'll see. I I did have a vague conversation with Boots as well about a different idea to do with builds as a series we could do together. That might be where you see him next on the channel. I guess we'll have to work that out over time. As far as the guild is concerned, I do have a huge announcement I really want you guys to pay attention to. Check this out, the Windswept Descent event we will be hosting. This is a bit later in May, May 24th, but check it out, the Spud Roller Beetle Race. We've done all kinds of different things at our guild hall, but Roller Beetle Race, we haven't really just yet. Obviously, several of our members have played with the tracks and freely decorated as you can as a part of the guild, but we're doing a proper full-on event here. Spud presents to you a Roller Beetle Race of unprecedented difficulty 
difficulty designed to weed out the bad and challenge the best. The slightest doubt or delay will send you rocketing over the edge to an early and deadly descent. But skilled racers will discover an adrenaline-packed course with massive leaps, spiraling drifts, and the thrill of intense competition. Much as I've done with the other Guildhall events, I will do a video on this, and anyone is welcome to come. We will be doing prize giveaways, as we often do, worth hundreds and hundreds of gold. Please do feel free to come along with this, guys. Uh, even if you're not a member specifically of the guild, we can find a way to include you. It's far enough later into the month, honestly, that you should have plenty of time to hit up the Discord and join. It's not that difficult to get into the guild, and the more the merrier, right? So, big thing with the guild. I'm sure there's some other videos I still want to do, like Deep Stone and Raid coverage. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten that. But that moves me lastly to the next big thing I really care about. That's streams. Right, so basically this entire year I have not streamed. Here's the plan. Here's what's going to be happening. When the finale comes out on Tuesday, we're going to have another big, long stream, many hours as we play it blind for the first time. It will be exactly the same as last time, where it's me enjoying it as a fan, first and foremost, with my friends in our Discord chilling and just taking it in it will mean some of my initial impressions could be way off and then you'll get my further thoughts and summaries and stuff on youtube following it afterwards but that stream i did was one of the most well received streams i've done in a long time and it was a lot of fun to play so that's exactly what will be happening on tuesday i should mention at this point the top link in the description is where you want to go for that it's when the patch comes out so just click it open the tab hold it it will likely be, if it's anything like last time, when you guys finish your own playthroughs, I'll still be live going through mine, because I go through fairly slowly. Uh, so yeah, that's what you want to see. It's at the top of the description. After Tuesday, though, I'm coming back to regular streaming. So, let's talk a bit about that. For a long time, regular streaming for me was just this tiny thing I hardly even considered. It was three days a week, so not even the majority days of the week, just over the weekend, and I'd do a couple of hours in the evening. That was it, so that I could focus more where I really care about YouTube, and that has not changed. But going back to it, I want to try something else out, and it kind of links to the original, original Twitch streams I did several years ago now. That's breakfast shows. Yeah, so instead of in the evening, when I come back, it will be for breakfast, but instead of just three days a week, I'm going to do it every day. The streams will be slightly shorter than the old ones, but every day you can have potatoes for breakfast like we originally did, and we'll be doing some entertaining stuff. Now, essentially, this has been born out of the fact that one thing I really enjoyed doing recently was waking up, and having coffee in the morning, playing Guild Wars, doing like a game of PvP, or getting some achievements. And I would turn those into videos over on my second channel for the AP of the Day series or the Game of the Day series. And I really like that rhythm. So I'm going to recapture that with the Twitch streams, which will give you even more than the old AP of the Day and Game of the Day that I was running. Uh, there's a lot more we could talk about. And in terms of specific content I'll be doing on those streams... I have a really good idea. A couple of other smaller things I want to do. We talked about the Winds of Change Canther playthrough, and there are various projects. But one specific thing I'm really excited about. I'll give you the name as a teaser now. But if you want to know what the actual thing is and be there for day one, you want to check out the breakfast streams themselves. Uh, the main thing I want to do is called Guild Wars 2 Master, and I'll leave it there. As far as the streams are concerned too, Guild Wars is not the only thing on my mind. We have seven days to play with. And listening to your advice, dear community, I'm going to dedicate one of those days to non-Guild Wars stuff. Uh, for a very cool reason, a few days ago, I was tweeted by some game devs. Uh, I ended up getting into a couple of emails. The guys that made The Legend of Grimrock and Grimrock 2 are releasing a new game. It's called Druidstone. I really know very little about it, but they gave me a Steam key. They said they enjoyed my Let's Play so much of the old Grimrocks. I've just got it on Steam now. They said it's no harm, no foul if you don't enjoy it, but uh, we'd really love you to check it out. So I'm going to try it. Guess when that releases? One day after War Eternal. Seriously, May 15th. So we'll find one of those early streams checking out Druidstone. I'll do a blind playthrough on there. We'll see whether it's any good. And if I really enjoy it, then that can become a full-fledged LP later. I have a lot of faith in those guys. The Grimrock games are amazing, and I'm really flattered that they actually reached out to me for that. So, I know you guys liked my X2 Bestiary stuff. I know that you liked the Solaris streams we did very recently. Uh, hopefully, these ones will be very cool as well. 
that's pretty much uh, the main stuff going on right now. I really hope the return to streams will be good. I've definitely found in these past few months, there's a lot less feeling of connection with you guys, a bit less going on in Discord, a bit less going on in the guilds, and particularly, I don't like to go into a big sob story, on Patreon, I've lost amazing amounts of support over the past few months. Uh, to quite a scary level. So hopefully bringing the streams back we can see where we'll go uh, Without having to do anything too drastic and people actually feel it's worth going over there uh, And helping out as a little incentive for you. I think I mentioned this on the previous video I have a bonus tribulation mode series now uh, that I shot in secret when super adventure box was out you guys on the channel saw my regular playthrough there is now a full trib one uh, Over on patreon. I think I already mentioned that on the video though, didn't I? Uh, well, there you go. Okay, so that's it, guys. That's the update. That's what's coming up over the next few days. There will obviously be a lot of stuff, and we're mostly going to be looking at War Eternal pretty quick, but that's the plan. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I appreciate you all, as ever, especially those of you who watch a video like this where I'm not really even talking about anything important, just myself, and I'll see you for the next one very soon.